Well, I think the planet is officially off course. Doesn't know what the hell's going on. We got the tail end of this jolly cyclone from up Queensland way, and it feels like it's blooming winter. Yesterday we had heat stroke, today we're getting frostbite, so we don't know what's going on. But anyway, so apologies for the sound in about five seconds time when we try to load up a few paradise boxes. We're just taking a couple of extras back down so we can check the nectar flow tomorrow morning. So we just thought we might as well make it a worthwhile trip. So come along and see where we land. Well, I'm only, I'm only learning about this camera work, but I think with this weather on, we might need more than just a windsock. So there might not be a whole lot of talking. We might just be moving some boxes when you're not looking. So if it's a miracle of bloody YouTube and suddenly they're on the trailer, it's only because the cameraman whipped out because it's pissing down rain. trailer then we'd know where the bloody shit was but because we're on our little trailer we didn't have our normal pattern of recording of where the bloody hives were so we've, we're checking our footage and we're going to try and put them back where they were and so there'll be a competition for people to actually write in or is it, do you write in anymore I don't know anyway there's going to be a competition to see who can pick which box we f***ed up <laughs> and didn't get back where it was meant to be because obviously you've got to put them reasonably back where they were because they'll be orientated to that spot and come back there. So Anyway, and we've got nowhere else to go. So we're going to give this a go. Anyway, my brain's a bit foggy because I've been up since bloody three o'clock so I'm a little bit blooming every all over the place. But if I ramble on a bit, it's because I haven't had enough coffee. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Okay, this is officially ridiculous. <laughs> Here we go. We're, we're, we're back to where we started. But anyway, normally the weather goes that way. It doesn't normally go that way. <laughs> so, just as well we check the weather map though, otherwise we'd be standing in the hill somewhere telling you how wet it is. And then I'd be going, well, this was really good fun. <laughs> I don't know what the hell we would have done then. Anyway, we're going to put them back and hopefully we can put them back roughly where they were. What happened? Oh, I don't know. The bloody strap let go. So we've got bees in bits and pieces going everywhere. And now we have to put our suits on because they're very upset as they would be if the house is ripped apart. Oh, blimey hell, this is not the ideal. That's why we should have used our lifter and this sort of thing doesn't happen then. Oh, crap. Oh, sorry, girls. What a bloody mess. Oh, shit. Well, they're really not happy, as you would imagine. Ah, shit. We might as well open the door, because I don't think it matters now. I guess if you were in a tree, this would never happen to you, would it? Hello! Knock, knock! Sorry, ticks. Oh, oh 
people are bloody peacefully having a little nap. <laughs> Golly. Hang on, that's not that fing either. <laughs> Try and rain again. Back together again, you poor little buggers. <sighs> Things not to do in your spare time. <laughs> All right, anyway, I guess at least we got them back together before it started pouring. Hey, dear. Not everybody's actually recording their journey on YouTube or well, bring their own cameraman along but I was just thinking it'd probably be a bloody good idea when you're moving your boxes around just in case of an emergency like this a bloke should take a photo on his phone at least that'd be a jolly good start hell who knows you might be able to put it in your album while we're on this storm ridden little mystery I'll show you something after we place these boxes on it we're gonna put them up the back here just so that they can sort their own crap out and then um show you something over here that's a bad option for a storm. for the plan of putting the bloody labels on these boxes without the wind. Anyway, that'll have to happen tomorrow while well, you're not here. But I just spied with my little eye. We've lost the lid off one of these boxes over here. <clears throat> Which is not necessarily a very good idea in the middle of a rainstorm. Oh, blooming heck. The one box without a strap, isn't it typical? It does not look promising. We might just, I don't know, we'll just lift that super off and <coughs> see what the next layers do and see how, whether they made a little cluster to try and stay warm. Oh, actually, they don't look too bad down to this point. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hopefully, we haven't lost them. Anyway, they're making me crazy. They're only meant to be for starting out, but you know, the starting out thing's taking a fair while to get rolling. Anyway, we'll put the lid on, we'll go and get ourselves a strap and we will, no, hopefully they can all dry themselves out. Oh, well that's what the lid's meant to be doing when it's on the bee boxes, keep shit dry. But anyway, kept the ground dry instead. I try to tell myself it's all just an adventure. I think that's nearly enough adventure for an epic fail morning. <laughs> We've been loading and unloading and fooling around and not sleeping and nothing's actually happened. <laughs> We've sort of gone in a circle. Although we have had a bit of an emergency evacuation from the fruit fly excitement. So I guess that was one positive, which was what was the motivation for moving a few of these. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> here we go again. The life of a migratory beekeeper, apparently. Skippy, 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 the bush kangaroo. What's up, Skip? There's a whole heap of f***ing bee boxes in our backyard. What the hell happens there? I always thought it funny how Skip, through the ticking noises, could tell you a number plate. <laughs> What's that, Skip? You said you see the bush bee man. He dropped off some bee boxes. Hopefully they get some nectar flow. Oh, I like bees, said Skip. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. Ah, what was the crazy shells? Oh, he was in a silver ute. And his number plate was WBC674. Hmm. He looks suspicious. Anyway, good old Skippy. You'd probably see that on the blooming internet somewhere. If you typed in Skippy the Bush Kangaroo, he'd probably pop up. <laughs> you'd know what I'm talking about.
here at the Bush Bee Man, we don't normally have to mention disclaimers and stuff because, I mean, we try to keep it light and informative and entertaining so that, you know, you guys out there can see what beekeeping's all about. But when American fowl brood turns up, well, the rules get changed. And the law is that you have to dispose of the girls that have got that disease, even which is pretty crap because we only had two cells in the whole bloody frame. But anyway, the rules is the rules. So if you don't want to see death and destruction, perhaps don't watch this episode. So this is the day that no beekeeper wants. Bloody hell, we've got a little bit of AFB going on here, so we've got to block our little girls in and try and contain this contagion. It's a bit like the flu for bees, but going f***ing crazy. So we'll just trap our little ladies in board so they can't get out and have a run. And then they're going to be not long for this world, apparently. Not something you want to do, but then, you know, better that. Better that, just these five, than the whole bloomin' layout. Uh, so that's the trouble with this shit, it just spreads like wildfire. So I was just flicking through all the details for disposing of bees, and they talk about the fact that you pour a little bit of petrol on their head, which gives them a bit of a hurry up. Interesting thing is, you need a permit to be able to use petrol for something other than putting it in your car. So, you know, crazy shit, isn't it? There's regulations on regulations. So don't forget, you've just got to read all the information before you do anything crazy. Anyway, here we go, the first little bit, you don't need very much of this. Tip it on along the edge, wouldn't you? Right, here we go. Not very friendly, is it? Sorry, girls. <laughs> They're a really nice healthy box too. bloody feeder in there, <laughs> that's gonna have to go under fire. Yeah. F you, wouldn't it? Oh, beautiful healthy box. It's a sad day, isn't it? Sad day here in the bee yard. <sighs> I think I might even have to have a cry. <sighs> this could be worse, it could be all on the fire. Uh, hopefully you can contain it. That's the next excitement, isn't it? This is the last one out of our little group. So we'll get that, get them a bit of a fix up. Then we're gonna cover them up over here and figure out how the hell we're gonna burn them in the middle of the fire season. Uh, what the hell's going on, eh? It's just not fucking cricket, really, is it? Uh, it's a stupid ad on the telly doing that at the minute. It's just not really cricket. But anyway, that's, that's a stupid thing. I'm just a bit sad. <sighs> Probably would have been a good idea if I'd measured this. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <sighs> These are using my fumigation pot, so I'm not sure what happens after this. This is just temporary until we work out the burning bit. <sighs> God, I'm unfit, aren't I? <laughs> Hear me dearly. Anyway, this is not a, if you're wondering, this isn't a permanent solution. It's just to put the ladies in there so is that they're sealed off so they can't get robbed out. I don't think they'll get robbed out when they're full of petrol, but still, we don't want them to be, you know, spreading this crap that we've got. So this is my plan, since it's on the move and I happen to have these, are what I usually use to fumigate the frames a bit, to kill off the dreaded wax moth, which used to be my worst problem, but now it's kind of the least of my worries. But anyway, oh, the joys of beekeeping. Anyway, so we've just used that tool to open up the infected box. So I just got a little bit of bleach. I mean, you can use all sorts of whatever cleaning stuff you want. The last the other day had an industrial cleaner, but bleach seems to work good. I'm just gonna rinse my tool off so I don't forget. Give my hands a bit of a clean up. 
I guess the one thing about this foul brood thing, you start getting all a bit excited about keeping things nice and neat. Keep your records in order, clean everything up. So look at that. You wouldn't have thought the bush female would have a clean hive tool like that, would you? I think the interesting thing though is that, um, of course, there's all the best laid intentions with this bleach and carry on. But according to all the bits that I've read, this doesn't kill the blowing disease anyway. But anyway, everything's got to help. Everything's got to help a little bit, doesn't it? Well, anyway, we've got the ladies all sorted out in here, so we thought, well, we'll just sneak back down here and give you a bit of a look at what it actually foul brood looks like. Oh dear. Shit, you're looking, mainly we're looking for the perforated little um, brood cells. So if they've been picking at them, perforating them, and that's usually a telltale sign. These girls were not really, they, none of this was very badly infected, just a little bit, so just early stages. So but we'll have a look if we can find the one that we picked apart. You see how they're sunken a little bit there? That's the sort of thing you're looking for. Anyway, here we go. This is what you don't want to see when you're in this bloody mess. You just get your matchstick and squirrel it around in there a bit and you can see it's sticky out. See how it's sort of sticking to your matchstick? Like I said, it's very early stages, so they weren't too bad, really. But it doesn't matter. Bad enough. Came back positive, so that's the end of that. You get a positive reading, you've got no foot to stand on. <laughs> of course, the shitty part about this, even though it's really sad and very miserable, um, it's just something that you have to do. If you get foul brood, you just really have to bite the bullet, get rid of the ones that are infected, because if you don't, next thing you know, if you come back in a year's time, all of these 40 hives will have been in trouble. And then you've got to burn the whole bloody lot of them. So that's a bit crap. And so, yeah, if you've only got one hive in your backyard, don't forget to do your periodic tests and just make sure you keep an eye on things. And you know, if you find this, well, that'll suck in the flow hive. I don't know what happens there, but you can send it off to get gamma raid. So I guess you'd send, a, get all the honey out of the top thing and send it off to Sydney or Melbourne or no, where is it? I think it's Queensland for a lot, but if you've only got one in your backyard, I think it's Victoria. So if you're wondering whether you've got a disease in your in your bee box, there's a few ways you can go about finding out. This is in Australia. I'm sure in America or Europe or wherever else you're living in the world watching us, there's somewhere that you can go that's a bee laboratory. We've got Gibbles here. I think it's Gibbles. I'm pretty sure it's called Gibbles. Anyway, I've got the address. but <laughs> And this is like the little pots you put your honey samples in. And the interesting thing is, our honey samples came back negative out of the 10 boxes that I picked the honey out of. Obviously didn't have any badness in it. So that's not necessarily 100% guaranteed. So, but it's regulation and you should do it anyway. But if you've only got one box, I'm guessing you'll know pretty well. If you send a honey sample off, you'll know what's going on. I guess if you had a flow hive, you could just run the thing straight in the little pot and send it off, couldn't you? So that's one option. The other option, this is which a bit more, this is the next excitement, which is what we did the other day when we were going through. There's a few different options. These are little slides from the actual institute, from Gibbles or from clinical labs or whatever you want to call it. So you have your little, little slide that you write on here, what hive you pulled it out of. And um, so you write on your hive, obviously, slide number and the date. And then you put your smear on here and then you send that off to get tested and then they'll send you an email in the mail which is what the email I got which said you're in I'll clear it to you anyway you're in that world of AFB which is very sad I'm almost hard pressed to say it American fouling of the brooded and anyway that's a naughtiness that you don't want because then it also if you get European fowl brood it's not so bad but it's still you've got to find out get your test, send it off but the other cool thing that I found if you're this isn't a legal thing well I think if this comes back up positive then you've still got to send your slides off to Gibbles but these are really cool these are like the honeybee fowl brood testing kit which is um yeah after this excitement I found these and thought hey you know that looks pretty cool we'll give that a run maybe that'll get us out of trouble the cameraman decided that we'll have to show you on a box that is already infected so we can see if it works I was saying to him on the way here, it'd be interesting if we do a test on this bloody thing and it comes back negative. Then we won't know what to think. Anyway, we'll get back in this box before the ladies get too crazy and we'll see if we can get a positive reading out of this box. And as I said earlier though, this is not necessarily... Um, well, I don't know, I don't think it's sanctioned by the 
purrs of people just yet, but it's a very handy little tool. It's hard to be, it's hard to be my jubilant self doing this project. I feel a bit grim today. Anyway, I think it's very important for you guys to see this, so I don't know, we debated whether or not to show you all this excitement, but it's all part of the gear. So here we are, we'll find our little infected box again. You can see that weren't, they weren't terribly bad, because it's a bit hard to bloody find one to show you. But that does not the point. So don't be fooled just because you look like they're all healthy. Don't be fooled into thinking you haven't got something bad going on. Found that little larvae in here, which is all yummy and black and sticky. And we'll put them in our little pot. Try not to get too much crap over everything. So we'll just put this back together. So that's the purpose of the exercise done. You don't want anybody coming over here to do a bit of robbing. Put it all back together, close it all up, keep the other locals out of here. We'll put them back in our sterile storage area in a minute. We're just giving you a bit of a rundown. So you just give this a bit of a shake for a little while until you mush everything up. Right yeah, so we've got our little pathogen all munched up by the ball bearings. So we just get our little what is it, eyedropper is it? I guess a little dropper upper. Suck up some goo. You got a little bit of goo there, and you're just gonna drop it on your test pattern. And now you just gotta wait for it to soak in. Oh the excitement of it all. <laughs> Whilst we're waiting, I might just go and rinse my hands off. Well, as you'd expect, it's come up positive. So, I mean, it'd be a bit sad if it didn't come up positive. Although it's not super strong, the T part. Like, as in, because if it only has one line with the C, it says it's negative. But they have two lines and then your cactus department. So, which is us. Anyway, I thought these were a pretty cool little kit. They're an on the run kit that you can check out what's happening. So, perhaps go online. Google up Vital Foul Brood Testing Kit and have one of them in your kitchen cupboard just for the hell of it. So you never know. So you can do your part to protect our bees and save us all a whole lot of mess up. Well, we just thought it was timely to get organised to have some breakfast. So we're going to have a little bit of a cook up. Just the sad part is though we're having a bit of a cooker for our bee boxes. Anyway, this is the joys of foul brood. You've got to get rid of shit. You could send them off to get gamma radiated, but some of these are a bit sad anyway. So I figure we'll just burn these. I've got some boxes that are a bit better that we're going to get um, fixed. But these ones are on the fire because they were going to get taken out of commission next season anyway. But here we are having a joyous Sunday morning while our ladies are having to sleep in. Got that under control. Ah, me dead. Oh. Whew. Well, being that it wasn't a total fire ban today, we thought we'd have ourselves a comfort fire and um, accidentally slip a few B frames on there as well. To but my daughter in law made a very good point. If, aren't you feeling comforted the fact that you've got rid of your American fowl brood? So I'm reasonably comforted that they're in there on, on the bloody big heap and no one else is going to get infected. It's a bloody sad day, by the way, if you get this happening, and I sympathise if you've only got one hive in your backyard. But if you happen to get this, do the right thing. Ring up the Persa girls and boys, or no, you've got to ring them up and report it, and they'll come around and clarify it, and then they'll help you destroy the box. I'm not sure what goes on in the suburbia, but I'm sure the Persa people have played with this game before, so... What was I saying earlier? You know, there was this old advert campaign, do the right thing, put it in the bin, do the right thing if you've got some AFB. Yeah, because even though you wouldn't want to believe it, and I'm not sure what all the big commercial beekeepers feel about it, but what I know is that you guys are in the epicenter of bee disease, because you're right next to the ports, you're right next to the airports and the actual seaports, 
And if anybody's probably going to get an exotic outbreak, not foul brood, that's been here for, since the bloody 1800s, but some other weird ass shit that could come from overseas, like them bloody mites that the whole world's got, that could come into Australia. So you are going to be the guys that are going to tell what's going on. So just do the right thing. And if you love your girls, it's a good idea. The interesting thing about the beekeeping community is that we're a really tight, tight little community of concerned people. Sometimes the concern gets a little bit carried away and they go around snooping in other people's boxes, but then again, sometimes it's a good help because I, I'd actually miss this little infection because it was really early on. And one of my concerned mates checked it out and got me organized. So cheerio to you.